Imagine that you're working in a company with thousands of employees and that you're having a corporate meeting over Zoom or any other remote conferencing tool. Everyone from your company can join the meeting. Anyone can speak and anyone can listen. What would happen if thousands would start speaking at the same time? Well, that's not a big deal. You can mute everyone, but whomever should be speaking at any given moment. A bigger problem is that everyone is listening to everyone else. Now, one might argue that your company should be open and not hide anything from anyone within the company. Well, that might be a worthy goal. There are cases when conversations should not be accessible to everyone, especially now that companies are often discussing who will be fired and how bad the financial situation is. Now, to make things more complicated, imagine that not only everyone working in your company can speak and listen, but anyone in your building or in a block or in a city can do the same. Such a meeting, especially if confidential information is shared, would soon become chaos with unforeseeable consequences. Now, I will guess that such openness is not always what you want. If that's the case, why are you allowing a similar situation in your Kubernetes clusters? In Kubernetes, any pod can reach any other pod through services. And that's amazing, right? Gone are the days when we had to deal with IPs, complicated service discovery mechanisms, and so on and so forth. Every pod can reach any other pod simply by sending requests to the service name and port. And here comes the question. Are you sure that's what you want? Are you sure you want any application to be able to talk to any other application? To explain what I mean, let's take a look at what happens from the networking perspective when we run applications in Kubernetes, and then we can discuss how we can fix the problems if there are any. Well, for one, Kubernetes makes sure that any application running in a pod can reach any other application to services. So we define pods and services. Pods are abstracts that group containers together. Typically, a pod containers a container with an application and any number of sidecar containers that perform additional functions like logging, monitoring, and so on and so forth. Today, however, in this video at least, we do not care, I do not care about pods beyond their relations to services. A Kubernetes service is yet another abstraction that provides a stable IP address and DNS name for a set of pods. They are much more than that, but in the context of today's subject, what matters is that we have services associated with pods so that other pods can reach them. All that an application needs to do is use the service name and port to communicate with pods associated to that service. Easy. But here's the problem. Any pod can reach any other pod through services. Let me repeat that. Any, any, any pod can reach any other pod through services. That's not necessarily what we want. I'm all in favor of freedom, but some restrictions might be needed. And we are in luck though. Kubernetes has a baked in solution just for that. And it's called network policies. So let's see how we can use Kubernetes network policies to fine tune the communication between pods, or to be more precise, to define who can reach what. As I already said, by default, any Kubernetes pod can communicate with any other pod through services. That means unrestricted access to anything within the cluster or even outside the cluster. For some, that is all we need, while for others, that might be too permissive. In those cases, we already have network policies as a solution baked into Kubernetes. With them, we can define rules how Kubernetes pods communicate with each other or even with external resources. We can define rules that restrict or enable access to specific pods. And we can use different criteria to define what the source and destination 
IP addresses, protocols, and ports are. Now, here's an important note. One of the things I just said was not correct. Network policies are not baked into Kubernetes. The specification for network policies is part of Kubernetes, but the implementation is not. The implementation comes from whichever networking plugin you're using in your Kubernetes clusters. You might not even know what you have, and that's okay. Most, if not all, CNIs or container networking interfaces support network policies. So you should not have an issue on that front. What matters for this story is that CNI itself is implementing the policies and that makes perfect sense since, well, it's about network policies and there is no better place to implement them than in whichever networking solution is running in your cluster, right? Now let's jump into the hands-on part of this video and see in action first applications without network policies, and then we'll jump into policies themselves. Let me start by deploying an application with a command like kubectl, namespaces production, I want to apply whatever is in customized base. Simple, easy, an application, a silly demo that anybody can deploy and not really complex one, just a service deployment in English, right? No. To demonstrate how networking works and later on policies, I'm going to deploy a second application, but it's not going to be an application. It's going to be uh, just a container running in a pod with an Alpine image, and then I'm going to enter into it and do stuff. Anyways, let me execute kubectl namespace staging. I want to run other app. Image is going to be Alpine. I don't want it ever to restart. I want to remove it and after it's finished and STD in and TTY and I want to SH into it, right? So I'm just entering into a container and then I'm going to install curl with apk add dash u curl. Now I have CURL, I can send requests to my first application. And remember, this one is running in a different namespace. This one is running in staging, while the previous one was running, is running still in production. So here comes the moment of truth. From an application running in the staging namespace, I'm going to send the request to the application running in the production namespace. And I'm going to do that by executing CURL and then HTTP silly demo, that's the name of the service and dot .production, the name of the namespace, and port is 8080, and I'm getting the response, this is a silly demo, and so on and so forth. So, from an application running in one namespace, I had no problem accessing application running somewhere else. Same namespace, in this case, a different namespace, and so on and so forth. So, no restrictions, any application, any container can speak with any other container through services. So, that's not what I really want. So, let me exit this uh, container, and start over, but this time with the policies. Now, since network policies are part of Kubernetes, at least the API, and then implementation comes from your networking solution, we can find out what is the schema that we can use to write the policies themselves with a simple command, like kubectl explain network policy, make it recursive, and then we have the output of all the fields of the whole schema that we can use to define policies ourselves. Now, you can go to the documentation and find out similar information, I mean, more extended information. But anyways, there is a schema, and all we have to do is to define one or more resources based on that schema, schema of the network policy. Now, when defining network policies, there are two types of policies we can define, ingress or egress, and egress, depending on what we want. Let's start with ingress. I have a policy defined in the file MP ingress YAML. It's a network policy. There is pod selector that says, hey, this policy should apply to all the pods that have labels that are matching the label that I have specified here, which is named silly demo. And then we have ingress section, right? It can be ingress or egress or both. And in this case, ingress meaning incoming traffic. And it's saying, hey, the incoming traffic is allowed only from namespaces that match specific selector which in this case is environment production. So if there is an application running in environment production or a namespace that has the label environment production, then you should allow the traffic, otherwise shut it down, not allowed to talk to it. And by the way, this policy applies 
on the TCP protocol on port 8080, which is the port of the destination of service. So let's apply that policy and see how it works. kubectl namespace is production, I want to apply whatever is defined in MP ingress YAML. Now, one nice thing about policies is that when we describe them, we have humanly readable uh, way to find out what it's all about. Uh, so let's do that. Let's do kubectl namespace production describe network policy silly demo. And over here, we can see the pod selector. We can see what is the allowed incoming or ingress traffic. And we can see that it is not affecting egress, at least not yet, meaning that this application can communicate outbound to whomever but ingress is restricted to this namespace or namespace selector and that port. Now, let's run through a couple of scenarios. We have a policy that says, hey, if you want to talk to this application, you need to be in one of the namespaces with uh, the label environment set to production. So I'm going to do something else. I'm going to rerun the previous second application based on Alpine image in the staging namespace. So kubectl namespace is staging. I want to run some other application, Alpine image, no, never restart, RM, STDL, all that stuff. And I'm running now a container wrapped in a pod in the staging namespace. I'm going to install CURL with apk add, and then I'm going to send a CURL request just as before, before it worked. But now I'm going to send a CURL request to silly demo in production on port 8080, and the uh, output says, no, you cannot connect to it. Doesn't work, baby. No, 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 no. The policy does not allow you to speak with that thing, with that service. So let me exit and repeat the same command to create a container in a pod, but this time I'm going to change the namespace from staging to production. And let's see, so that's the only change. Same thing in a different namespace, but this namespace is allowed to communicate with silly demo. So I'm inside the container, I'm installing CURL, and then I send a CURL request to silly them on port 8080. I do not have to specify the namespace because namespace is the same and I got the response. So some things are allowed, some things are not. In this case, it all depends on the namespace. It worked. Now let's exit this container and see what else we can do. Even better, actually, let's forget about communication between pods. Let's just see whether we can access the, the application through ingress, right? From outside of the cluster, completely unrelated with what we are doing so far, meaning restricting internal communication. So what happens if I send CRL request to the application from outside of the cluster? And the result is bad gateway. It doesn't work. And now you might say, hey, I never restricted ingress from outside of the cluster, but you did. You just don't know about it because you need to understand how ingress works. You already probably know because you watched my videos. So you know that ingress traffic means that something enters the cluster and then it goes to the service of the ingress controller. And from that service goes to your application, to the service of your application. And we never said that that should be allowed. Let me explain. Here we have another policy. Uh, it's almost the same as the previous one. At least the first part, the first entry in the ingress section is the same but we have a second section in the English specification that says, hey, apart from allowing the communication from the namespace that has environment production label, I want to also allow uh, communication from the namespace called cube system. Why do I have to do that? Well, I have to do that because the traffic comes from outside cluster to cube system service running in, actually to the service, ingress service running in the cube system namespace. And from there on, it's forwarded there, right? So you need to understand how communication in Kubernetes works if you want to apply policies, not get shut uh, in your back because of that. So anyways, I probably shouldn't enable all communication from the cube system namespace. I should probably say, hey, you, if it's coming from the traffic, traffic, which is my ingress, the one I'm using today, then it's okay. So let me apply this manifest, the updated policy uh, manifest with kubectl namespace production. I want to apply whatever is defined in MP ingress to YAML. And now I can try to send the CURL request coming from outside of the cluster through ingress and from ingress going to my application that works because I excluded from the policies 
all the services in the Cube system namespace. I sh again, I shouldn't do that. I should be more ex explicit about traffic, but hey, it worked. Now let's skip egress because that's more of the same. You use the same logic, same rules to uh, restrict which outgoing traffic can and cannot be done, performed. Let's jump into pros and cons. Let's talk about Kubernetes network policies. What are the good things? What are the bad things? Whether you should use it right now. Kubernetes network policies work only on open systems interconnect or OCI layers three and four. Now, what does it mean? That, well, that means that the policies are unaware of the applications and operate at the network and transport layers. Service meshes, on the other hand, like Linkerd and Istio, operate at the application layer, which is layer seven. As a result, they, and by they I mean service mesh policies, can have much more granular and feature-rich uh, abilities. With the service mesh, we could, for example, define a policy that allows only authenticated users to access a specific endpoint, or to define a policy that allows only a specific path to be accessed. That said, layer three and four policies are much, much faster than layer seven policies. And more often than not, might be all you need. So remember, what is in Kubernetes are layers three and four, and service meshes give you layers seven, three and four, not so capable, but better performance, layer seven application layer, more feature rich, but lower, worse performance. That's the summary of it. So at this point, you might be wondering whether you should use Kubernetes network policies or policies available in a service mesh. I'd say use Kubernetes network policies if the rule set is fulfilling your needs. It will be faster than using network policies from a service mesh. Do not go crazy and add a service mesh just in case you might need it one day you can always transition to service mesh network policies later on. On the other hand, if you need more granular policies, you should use a service mesh, at least for those specific policies. Finally, I must say that there is nothing wrong combining both. You might be using a service mesh for other reasons. For example, you might want its ability to control weight of traffic to different versions of an application, thus enabling uh, Canary deployments. In that case, you can still use Kubernetes network policies to control access to the applications and a service mesh for traffic control, like what I mentioned before, weighted traffic. Remember, Kubernetes network policies are there, no matter whether you're using a service mesh or not, unless you have a very, very special choice of networking in your Kubernetes clusters. So, Let's talk about pros and cons. Let's start about bad things. And you already heard where I'm going with it, right? The first one is that Kubernetes network policies are layer three and four only. You cannot use domains for egress, for example. You cannot use paths for ingress, and so on and so forth. Second, egress works effectively only within the cluster. Access to external services can only be limited by IPs, which is silly. Now, for the good things, First of all, it's baked into Kubernetes. It's already there. Use it. Second, it's faster than OCI layer 7 policies, like what's in service mesh. So that's it. Those are your choices. It's there. Use it. No good excuse. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Cheers.